1170U, Psychological Foundations and Digital Technologies. Module 10, video 10.3. We're talking about spirituality and technology. Here are the guiding questions for today's video. First of all, how do you define spirituality? How has technology, or has it, had an impact on our notions of spirituality? What draws people to technology with the same kind of fervor and excitement that was once reserved for religions? And how has the digital world changed our notions of human spirit and spiritual belief? Or has it changed anything at all? Try to give some examples of this. Defining spirituality, and please note these are some suggestions only. Spirituality and religion are not the same thing. Spirituality is more about an awareness and an honoring of wholeness and the interconnectedness of all things. It is about making meaning and that it is always present though often unacknowledged in the learning environment. You might sense this when you go into a space and get a positive vibe or a negative vibe or people have a certain energy to them. Spiritual development consists of moving towards greater authenticity or a more authentic self. So there are multiple definitions of spirituality. Think back to the experience of flow that we talked about in a previous video. Your life force, your chi, which is a subject of many activities such as qigong or tai chi, or your life energy. Miriam talks about spirituality. The sense of wonder and awe characteristic of a spiritual stance has been trivialized in the contemporary market-driven world to the point where we have ended up attempting trying to reinvent it through virtual reality. Any comments on this? How does it apply or not apply to the online learning process? In the psychology of the spirit, research does show that in longitudinal studies of adult development, <clears throat> as adults move into midlife and beyond, they tend to have a greater contemplation of the meaning of their lives and the spiritual aspects of themselves also struggle or difficulty or some of those unpredictable life events that Miriam referred to often challenge people to explore spiritual aspects of themselves that they wouldn't have otherwise. Everything I like the term grace. Graves uses this word instead of spirituality. The grace has a transcendent nature. It refers to a harmony of movement and having poise under all situations. It's not tied to a religious perspective, but moves to its own rhythm. It's very serendipitous, has a place in learning environments and in how we handle situations, and grace is transforming. So hey, remember transformational learning? Perhaps there's a spiritual component to that kind of fundamental change. Is there a role for grace in our professional lives? Well, in pedagogy or andragogy, Graves says that we are accountable to make the best plans possible, but at the same time we must be ready to abandon them. If grace ever comes into pedagogy, it will be because some sensitive soul had the wisdom not to thwart it. So the spontaneous and fluid nature of spirituality requires space where it can happen. In an overly programmed information dissemination teacher-driven class, leaves no room for any significant spiritual learning to occur. What about that feeling of grace in technological environments? Is there room for a sense of spirit in the digital techno world? Do you see people using their blackberries to connect to the larger universe? Or just the rational tangible universe? Or am I just being ridiculous here? Or do you think technology has opened the doors for us to cross cultural and religious boundaries, becoming the new common language of humanity? Miriam also refers to grace, and I really like this quote that she says, Grace happens in the ordinary experiences of daily life, in everyday routines and habits, in the small joys and disappointments of life. Moreover, it shows up in the most unlikely places. Grace lurks among the vegetables in the supermarket. Grace sits on a bar stool, smokes a cigarette. Grace roams the corridors of a big city hospital. Grace is always there, everywhere. We don't see it, but it changed our lives when we experience it. Let's reflect for a moment. Is there a role for spirituality, presence, or awareness in your journey? Can you identify moments of flow or a sense of aha or connectedness where you really felt connected to a bigger universe? Do you think technology helps this sense or not? And does technology unite us, make us feel more connected, 
or does it isolate us spiritually? What are some of the ways that we can foster spirituality in adult learning environments? This is from Palmer's book, The Courage to Teach. It talks about being able to create moments for space and silence in the learning environment. And you need to do this yourself when you're watching the video on your own. Take time to reflect and think about things and also to not think and just allow some spiritual space in your mind. Have a safe, supportive, sacred, confidential sharing environment, which is what we try to create in tutorial. Dialogue is important where there's listening, accepting, and where there's non-judgmental discussion. We need to support and challenge you as learners and make some kinds of interpersonal connection between learners. And you can decide for yourself whether you think the technology helps with that or doesn't. A teacher who's trying to foster spirituality has to examine their own story and beliefs, and you have to bring yourself to the teaching learning process as a learner or as a teacher. We also want to celebrate creativity, imagination, and storytelling. It has a big foundation in spirituality and poetry, art, and music. These are things we tend to devalue, but don't think we should give ourselves permission to do as adults. So we need to bring these things back into the learning process. In terms of making connections, we have to use our own imagination and also what Tisdale refers to as our cultural imagination. We need to connect spirituality with our diversity and our multicultural issues. And I'm sure that each of you has such a wide variety of spiritual backgrounds that it will be interesting to discuss in tutorial, and I hope you'll be willing to share those. Storytelling is one of the ways and one of the traditions that allows people to see from multiple perspectives and imagine. And just think about how technology has helped us in that storytelling tradition in terms of video games, movies, blogs, wikis, and chat rooms. Let's move on to your digital narrative. Your narrative is your story, and we're going to be sharing ours on the final day as our consolidation activity. You've been submitting these digital moments as we go through the course, and your digital narrative will be kind of a combination of all these and anything else that you wanted to add to sort of sum up how your journey has been through the course. The narrative is really the oldest and most natural form of storytelling. It's very firmly planted in a non-scientific way of knowing. So if that's your natural way to be is scientific, I will challenge you to open your mind a little bit. How will you use technology to create and share your digital journey through this course? Narrative knowing is more concerned with human experience, the lived experience of this course, than with the discrete facts, more with coherence than with logic, and more with understanding than predictability or control. So is anybody uncomfortable yet? <laughs> Schools and workplaces generally don't openly operate this way or celebrate this, but there is a workplace culture that exists, and adults learn to be part of certain workplaces through the hidden curriculum of expectations. We learn through narrative of what others do, say, wear, eat, find humorous. We learn who has power, where the cliques are. These are the narratives of the workplace. Can you give some examples from your own experience? How about any digital examples? Narrative learning has had a presence in adult education since the 90s. It's been used in professional discourse across many disciplines, um, such as psychology, education, literature, but also in practices of medicine, for example, at McMaster, in law and social work. So it, it is not a new way of learning. Journals are, can be a vehicle for expressing narrative, but there are other ways to do so, to music, art, or dance, and YouTube clips and digital representations of your narrative journey. Some key researchers on storytelling include Connolly and Clendenin, Mary Beattie, and Baumgartner and Merriam. So we know that narrative learning has strong research ties for qualitative research, and it has strong links to adult development and transformational learning. There is that word again, transformation. It connects us, it changes us, and it has a spiritual basis. Our narratives can be compelling because of the effective, emotional, spiritual, and somatic elements. Digital narratives have so many options, and we can share some samples in tutorial, but I will encourage you to start to produce yours so that on our last day, our culminating day, we can actually share these in tutorial. Here are the synthesis questions for this video. Is there a role for spirituality in the digital world? Has your relationship with the rational, logical, digital world changed your views on spirituality? Technology crosses global and cultural barriers, much like some world religions. 
and for some technology is the most powerful influence in their lives so here is the biggest question of all is technology the new religion I really look forward to hearing what you have to say in tutorial this week